Good morning everyone. We are going to be doing one of the most dangerous jobs on the farm today. Anhydrous ammonia. Pretty dangerous stuff, but if you respect it, we should survive. It's a little chilly this morning. It's only 33 degrees yet. Um, anhydrous is, it fluctuates a lot with the temperature. So you gotta make sure you got enough tank pressure to be able to run your desired rate. I'd really like to see it like 45 degrees or warmer. Um, the soil temperature is cold enough. So you wanna wait till the soil temperature gets down under 50. That way there's less of a chance of it leaching, but it's kind of a fine line. You gotta have enough temperature in the air to be able to run, but you want your soil temperature as cold as possible. So I'm gonna check the pressure real quick. We should be all right, I would think. Let's see. We are at over 50 pounds, so we should be good to go. Oil's good. And it takes over every show. All attacks. So we picked up the toolbar yesterday. Uh, we got a 16 knife DMI toolbar from FS. Uh, we picked it up, got everything hooked up, ready to go. We ran around out in the field and it just wasn't quite fit yet. So uh, we basically made sure everything was gonna work and it's looking like it's a little bit better shape today just driving from the road. It's getting a little gray on top. We had, I don't know how much rain we got over the weekend, maybe four tenths, half inch. That's kind of what it seems like. I guess I didn't really check. It wasn't quite fit yesterday. So we got everything working and should be good to go. I'm gonna go out there and try it. See if it's fit now. Well, I just got started out here. I want to make sure everything's working before I got the camera out. I thought I had a broken knife. I had one that wasn't sealing, but it's just the hose came off. I need to get a screwdriver. There's a big rock. Never mind. There, so that was an easy fix. A little bit more fit today. It's still not perfect, but we want to get this done this week because we've got some other stuff to move on to. Um, I'm in kind of a wetter area of this farm anyway. It's not too bad once you go that way. So we're going to keep rolling here. Um, I'll kind of explain what we got going on here and what exactly we're doing once I get back in the tractor. All right, so you may be wondering, what is anhydrous? Anhydrous is a form of nitrogen fertilizer that we use to grow corn. In fact, it is the strongest form of nitrogen fertilizer that you can buy. And by that, I mean its fertilizer analysis is 8200, which means it's 82% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, 0% potassium. So something like DAP, which is a dry fertilizer that we spread, its analysis is 18460. So it's 18% nitrogen, 46% phosphorus, 0% potassium. Potash, OO60, zero nitrogen, zero phosphorus, 60% potassium. And I keep having my toolbar plug up, so I'm gonna stop talking for a while until I get this part of the field done. This is one of the fields that we disked, and there's a lot more trash on this side of the field because I didn't get it disked before I worked it. So I'm gonna try and get this done so I can pay closer attention. And then I'll come back and talk to you guys once I get over there. All right, so I got that side of the field done and my tank's empty. So I gotta run up to the house, grab another tank. Um, it's going all right. I'm having a lot of trouble with it plugging. I think we just have so much trash here. Uh, our corn head is kind of a piece of crap and it didn't chew up the residue very much. So we got long strands of corn stalks. It should be better here where I disked and then we ran the disc ripper. So it, it chopped up the residue a little better. I also lowered toolbar a little bit so the coulters go down deeper and cut up that trash first before the knife gets to it so um hopefully i can run the rest of the day if i keep fighting it i might just have to wait i don't know we just picked this corn a couple weeks ago so it's not really broke down that much yet the residue anyway so we'll just see what we can i got 
this field, there's 37 acres on this part of the farm. There's 160 I want to do right here, but I got this field pretty close to done. I could do 26 acres on a tank, so. Dad brought me my tank out to the field, so that was nice of him. All right, so there's a catch base around here somewhere. I need a flag. Yep, totally ran it over. I ran over the basket. It didn't hurt the actual tile, so it happened. So I'm still having a ton of trouble with this thing plugging up, and it always happens in the same spot, so I need to see what the deal is here. I mean, everything's going in the ground deep enough. You can see over here. See, we're starting to plug on this side already. Ah, it's frustrating. It's definitely fit enough. I just think the problem is those coulters right there are not going in the ground deep enough. So they're not cutting the trash before it gets to the knife and then it just bunches up in front of the knife and causes a problem. So, I don't know. I guess I could lower these. This field hasn't been chiseled for very long so the stalks haven't had any time to break down. And like I said, there's really heavy trash here. I just got one round left, so I'm just gonna fight it for that. And then I'm gonna move over right next to me. That field got chiseled probably two, three weeks before this. Maybe it's had some time to decompose. The corn wasn't down as bad on that farm. So the corn had chewed the stalks up a little better. Hopefully that'll make a big difference and I won't deal with plugging so much. I'm just gonna raise this guy up and back up a little bit before I get started. That way it'll maybe work that plug through a little better. Forward, auto steer, engage. There we go. All right, so I got moved over to the next field, but we got a breakdown. I'll see if I can zoom in on it here. You see that white smoke right there in that general area? We have a vapor line on our toolbar that goes from the cooler. Let me zoom back out so you can see what I'm pointing at. So it goes from the cooler here over to a knife on each side. Well, that line broke. Um, it's not a big deal. That's not really like a rate controlled line. It just kind of gets rid of excess vapor in the cooler and injects it into the ground. So I finished my pass. I'm going to run up to the house. I don't think we've got any laying around at home, but if dad's at FS, he was picking me up some tanks. I tried to call him, see if he can pick me up a little bit of that line. I think I'm gonna get enough to change both because this side doesn't look too hot either. And I think while I'm up there, I'm gonna lower some of these coulters in the front. Maybe that will help me not plug up so much. This is the culprit right here. Might as well replace that one too. That's better. Somebody impacted it. Well, it's about two hours later, we're back in the field, got those coulters lower, got those hoses changed. Most importantly, I got lunch. Now we're back in the field. Had a phone call, it took a while from the seed salesman. So, I kind of lost where we were at, but 
I kind of wanted to go over some of the characteristics of anhydrous. I already talked about the fertilizer analysis of it earlier in the video. Now I kind of want to go over some of the chemical properties of it because this stuff is really, really dangerous. And it's dangerous for a very specific reason. And I'm going to explain that as soon as I turn the tractor around. So the reason why anhydrous is so dangerous is because it is a liquid under pressure. And its boiling point is something like minus 20 degrees. It's so cold that it'll actually burn you. And the other reason why it's so dangerous is because it's very unstable. The name anhydrous means without water, so it, in its chemical form, is always seeking water. Now you may know from grade school biology that the human body is like 75% water, so if you get it on you, it's just gonna take that water and suck it right out of you, especially if you get it in your lungs or your eyes. Those are the two most important parts you want to keep it away from. So whenever you're dealing with this stuff, you have to respect it, wear goggles, wear gloves, the right kind of gloves, keep yourself safe. If you respect it and always stay upwind of it, you'll be all right. Now you may be asking, if it's so dangerous, then why do you use it? Number one, it's the cheapest form of nitrogen fertilizer available. Number two, it's also the most potent. So like I said earlier in the video, it has the most nitrogen per pound. So you can cover a lot of acres really fast with it. It also bonds with the soil really well. It, uh, as soon as it comes in contact with the soil, it bonds with the soil immediately. So if you spread urea or 28% um, nitrogen, I'm getting another phone call. It might take a while for it to bond with the soil. I'll be right back. Hello? Well, I just got off the phone and my tank ran out shortly after. So went back to the farm, got a couple new fresh tanks. See if I can get this one unhooked. Sometimes the pins get bound in there. Oh yeah, we'll get it. Maybe. There we go. So I've kind of explained to you the fertilizer properties, the chemical properties of this. Your next question might be, well, why are you applying a toxic gas to the soil to feed the crops? Isn't that dangerous to our health? Well, no, it isn't. The only way it would be dangerous is if it leaches out and gets into the water. And even then, you're only talking about nitrogen. You're not talking about some toxic chemical like arsenic or something like that. All it is is nitrogen and hydrogen. So, that being said, you don't want it to leach out because you don't want a bunch of nitrates in your water. But it's not like the crop is going to be taking up a toxic chemical. It's taking up nitrogen, which is one of the essential nutrients for crops to grow. Now that I'm done with my rant, we're going to get this thing moving again because I've got a lot to cover. Crop remains to be harvested. They were taken in the last year and This is Mark So now that I'm over in this other ground that uh, has been worked for a little while longer, this thing's working a lot better. And I think lowering those coulters in the middle helped. Uh, the only one I had plug up was that guy on the end right there. Just started to plug a little bit and I caught it. So looking at it now, I think that coulter could be lowered just a skosh. But overall, everything's working pretty good over here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but those walking tandems out there on the wing yeah you can't really see it on video but those suckers are wore out they are flopping around all over the place i'll kind of be surprised if i make it through this season without those falling off but that's what happens when you're using the co-ops equipment it's not always up to snuff I'll definitely tell them about it because that needs to be fixed. Well, I'm about done with this farm here. I'm actually gonna roll this video into tomorrow because this isn't super riveting stuff. I don't have a whole lot more content I can add to this. But tomorrow, we are going to be doing anhydrous again, but we're gonna be strip tilling into some bean stubble. Uh, we strip till with our Blue Jet strip till bar, but we've never actually done it with anhydrous. So we're hoping that works out all right. 
Uh, we don't have row cleaners or rolling baskets on this toolbar. It should make pretty decent strips. We got a little bit of rain to soften the ground, so. I gotta switch tanks. I'm gonna roll this into tomorrow. And we're back. We're gonna do some strip tilling today. Hopefully it works out. First thing I've gotta do, I've gotta get this machine set up with the RTK system, uh, which is just a more accurate GPS guidance. So I've got a screen here. This guy right here, I gotta mount it. I got a mounting bracket. Um, I don't have the receiver. I thought dad was gonna bring that out here today, but he didn't, so. I gotta run back and get that. So the first thing I have to do is the people who owned this tractor before us tried to put the wrong size bolt in here. Uh, these are metric. I'm guessing they tried to put a half inch bolt in there. So these won't take any bolts. I went to the hardware store, bought the right size tap. I'm gonna try and clean up the threads and see if I can get this to work. It looks like the threads towards the back are decent. So we'll see what we can do here. And I don't have a tap handle with me, so. We're gonna try vice grips, see if that works. Just tap it in, give it a little tappy. Happy Gilmore reference. Sweet, good as new. Screen is mounted. You can have this one. And I will take this one. And we'll stick you right here. Sorry for the wind noise. Check the oil. Oil's good. Start the tractor, let it warm up. All right, next thing I have to do is clean off some of these knives. Um, they're mostly not too bad, but you get some like this that have got a bunch of dirt built up. Those are gonna plow pretty bad. toolbar actually had rolling baskets on it at one time. These are the brackets for it. Uh, FS actually sold them. So we were going to have them put them on, but they forgot that they sold them. So I'm hoping that once I get into the heavier ground, that it's not too chunky and it'll still work for strip till without the baskets. But I guess we'll see. Okay, now I got to set up my equipment. Um, Green Star equipment machine. Let's see. 9410R, 9410R, rear pivot drawbar, implement one. I don't know if I got this in here. NH3 tool, implement model, 16 knife, 16. All right, we should be good. Now I have to calibrate my TCM or terrain compensation module that tells the receiver how much the tractors pitch side to side. Um, when you change implements, they all have, might be a little bit different, so we always calibrate those whenever we switch receivers to different tractors. So, pretty simple process. You hit calibrate and then you turn around and get the front axle or the fixed axle of the tractor in the exact same position, hit cal again, and then it will calculate how much difference there is from left to right. So, that's about where we were and enter good to go all right I think I got everything ready to go got my tank hooked up I'm gonna see if I can get squared up here in the corner I used to being able to back into the corners with my strip till bar but obviously I can't back up with a tank And we are rolling. Good thing about running this screen is we have all of our lines from planting because that's what we use to plant with. So I don't have to make up any new lines. I might have to make some for the end rows, but it'll definitely help out a lot having those planting lines. All right, let's get out here and see what kind of job we're doing. That is a really nice looking strip. This is a little bit heavier part of the field right here. I'm really hoping you can hear me. This wind is terrible. But it's 
it's a little bit chunkier over here. I think if we let it settle over the winter, it should kind of mellow out. It'd be nice to have rolling baskets behind those units to kind of smush it back down and leave it not so humped. You, you definitely want it ridged up a little bit because it'll settle over the winter. Uh, this is probably a little more than I'd like to see, but we should end up with a pretty decent seedbed next spring. So this tractor tracks way better when you put an actual screen in it. Um, we were running on SF1 just off of this screen, which is what's built into the tractor. And obviously the SF1 isn't as good as the RTK signal, but I'm thinking this just isn't as good of a processor for auto steer. Because when we were working ground with the disc gripper, this tractor would sit here and just weave side to side. And it didn't really matter what I did, it would not change it. I changed sensitivities, I changed steering rates. The steering rate helped, but it just never really was perfect. Now that I've got the screen in here and the RTK receiver, this thing is dead on and it is awesome. And the great thing about that is with strip till, we can pull in here next spring with the planter and just be right on that line, right on the strip, and we won't have to shift or anything. RTK is awesome. It's expensive to get into, but for certain applications, I wouldn't want to go without it. Thanks for lunch, baby. You're welcome. Anytime. Zebra cakes. Made with real zebras. So Maria brought me lunch. We're just cruising right along here. I got about 30 acres left. It's going pretty well. Um, this thing's making some nice strips. I do wish we had the rolling baskets behind. Uh, it's leaving quite a hump, and it's a little chunky in areas, but I think we'll be all right. This is my rate controller. This is a Raven 440. Um, basically what it does is it senses the speed and it controls a gate valve back there on the bar and it opens it and closes it to compensate for your speed. So I can go as fast as I want within reason and this thing will keep my rate accurate. So I just want to step out here for a minute. This is probably the heaviest part of this farm and it is leaving it a little more chunky, but uh, we actually had some rain over the past week and it kind of softened this ground a little bit so I can take these chunks and just bust them right up like nothing. Uh, this type of ground a little bit heavier clay content so when it dries out it becomes basically a brick. So I can't remember if I touched on it earlier in this video or not but this stuff in this white tank is super dangerous and it can kill you. But that being said you can't be scared of it when you're working with it. You just have to respect it. So. If I'm getting out and I'm going to switch tanks, make sure you got the wind at your back. Uh, think about if I grab this valve and there's a leak, if I open this bleeder, where is this gas going to go? Because if it gets on your skin, if it gets on your eyes, it can burn you, it can blind you. It's really dangerous. But if you know how it reacts, you'll be safe. It's not a big deal. There are actually some farms that store this stuff on site. And it's really awesome that they can do that because they can take advantage of the prices when the prices are available. So if they can buy it really cheap at a certain time of the year, they can fill everything up and then use it when they want to use it. Right now, we're doing fall of light anhydrous, which isn't my first choice because there's always potential of it leaching out and you losing some. But right now, the price is really attractive. It's cheaper than we paid for it last spring. So we want to take advantage of that price while it's here because we don't know what it's going to be like next spring. Uh, it could go up, it could go down, but right now it's a really attractive price. It's about as cheap as we've ever bought it from our supplier. If I could, I would fill up everything I got at home and then I would side dress it, but I don't have on-farm storage. And to get on-farm storage is a big deal. You have to go through safety trainings. I'm sure there's more liability coverage that you have to cover for insurance. Um, you have to have your stuff inspected. The tanks are really expensive. The pumps are expensive. The plumbing, it's just, a huge hassle so most farms don't deal with storing it on farm you got to do what's economical especially while the prices aren't that great but it's also really dangerous and sometimes it can be a pain and i got a tile hole coming up so i need to pay attention because i fell in that last spring and it was not a fun ride Here we are on our last pass. 
That's going to knock this one out. All right, so there's everything you need to know about anhydrous. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe out there, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next one.